the zoo, zoo, zoo. There's family fun for everyone at the Utica Zoo. Hi everyone, Keeper Melanie here. Today, we're going to learn about enrichment, from what it is, to how you can make enrichment for your own pets at home. So what's enrichment? Enrichment is anything we give to the animals to keep their minds and bodies active. Not only do the animals here at the zoo get enriched all the time, but you probably give your pets enrichment often without even knowing it. Our goal is to give them more choice in their environment and give them ways to do behaviors they do naturally, like look for food, dig, and chase. We can use all different types of things as enrichment to encourage the behavior we're looking for. Some different types of enrichment are sensory, which is anything that involves the five senses, touch, taste, hearing, sight, and smell. You might give sensory enrichment to your pets using a laser pointer, music, or bubbles. Social, which can include interacting with other animals, seeing videos of other animals, or spending time with people. Spending time with your pets can count as social enrichment. Environmental, which is anything in the animal's surroundings, like the logs, rocks, perches, and other items either being added or moved in the exhibit. We call those items around their exhibit furniture. Environmental enrichment for your pet could mean moving around your own furniture or putting a dog bed, cat tree, or bird cage in a different spot. Manipulation, which is all about the animal being able to move an object or to do something with it. If you have a pet, chances are you already give them some kind of manipulative enrichment, like balls, ropes, or other toys that they can play with. Training, which is teaching them to do something. You can teach your dog, cat, bird, bunny, lizard, fish, just about any animal, a new behavior. Some of the most common things people can teach their pets to do is sit or shake. Foods and foraging, which includes anything food-related, whether that's getting a new treat, having to look for hidden food, or figure out how to get their food out of a puzzle feeder, which is a device or toy which makes the animal think and sometimes come up with creative ways to get to their food. Have you ever put your pet's treat in a rubber toy like a Kong? That's food enrichment. So, if we want to encourage our foxes to do a natural behavior, like dig, we might give them an environmental enrichment, like a big fresh pile of dirt. If we want to encourage them to look for their food, like they might look for prey in the wild, we can use a sensory enrichment, like the food's smell. If they are getting, say, some meat, you can dribble juices from the meat around the exhibit and hide their food at the end of the scent trail for them to find. Sometimes we have specific items we use as enrichment for animals, and sometimes we make new enrichment for them. You can even recycle some items like newspaper, toilet paper rolls, and boxes to make things like puzzle feeders. You can even do this for your pets at home. Paper mache is a fun activity that you can do to make a puzzle feeder of your own. You'll need newspaper cut into strips, a mixture of half flour and half water, and a balloon. Blow up your balloon and dip strips of newspaper into your flour and water mixture. Then place them on the balloon. Keep adding strips of newspaper until you've covered the entire balloon, just leaving an opening for food to fall out of. The more layers you add, the stronger the paper mache will be. When you're done, leave your balloon for several hours to let the paper dry. When it's dry, just pop the balloon being sure to get all of the pieces of balloon out of your paper mache and put in treats or kibble. It's always important to make sure that enrichment is safe. Safety is always something we have to keep in mind when giving enrichment. So when giving your pet paper mache or any other new enrichment, always be sure to watch carefully and make sure they don't eat anything they're not supposed to or interact with it in a way that causes harm. After we have given an animal an enrichment, we always give it a score. This score is usually based on whether or not the animal used the enrichment, how long they used it for, and if it achieved the goal we were hoping for. The more successful an enrichment is, the higher the score it gets. Enrichments that get high scores are often used or done again. When an enrichment gets a low score, we usually go back and change something about it or come up with something different for next time. 
You can do the same at home, keeping track of what enrichments you try with your pets and how successful they are. For examples on how to make your own enrichment, head over to uticazoo.org slash kazoo. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.